What's going on YouTube? It's time for a battle. Today's match is a battle that I had against Alexis. I believe that this was also a passerby battle. Lots of those going on. Do look forward to some VGC style matches later on this week. But as you can see, Alexis has a mono water type team, which is of course pretty interesting to run, especially with the additions of Mega Blastoise, Mega Gyarados, and Greninja to that water move pool. My own team, a little bit more team structure this time uh, than just grabbing things. I have my Scarf Diggersby. A lot of people still are sleeping on that. He hits really, really hard, and and Scarf just allows him to run away with threats using U-Turn. Uh, again, defensive Tyrantrum, especially defensive Togekiss. This is my banded uh, Gorgeist, which is really fun to play with. Of course, it gets Trick to trick away the Choice Band. It's priority in Shadow Sneak and Seed Bomb and, of course, Phantom Force just to catch things on the Switch. Uh, and a bulky Air Balloon Excadrill uh, so I could spin things away and, of course, Mega Gardevoir. Now, as I mentioned before, you turning away is kind of just Digger B's main purpose at the beginning of the battle. And I'm able to just take out Greninja, no problem. Um, I think my opponent just expected me to switch. I expected her to have a Focus Sash and I just wanted to break it. But that works for me too. So that's one Pokemon down really, really early on here, but with large threats like Gyarados and even uh, to a certain extent, annoying things like Quagsire with that unaware ability, not a team to be slept on here. Now, unfortunately, Togekiss does get poisoned as I U-turn out into it and just kind of see what this Empoleon wanted to do here. But since he's going to go for the Toxic, I figure let's just give him some applause, lots of claps, and he can keep on going for that, which will give me a free switch into my Excadrill. Um, he probably actually is going to end up expecting that just because he is locked in on Toxic and I only have one Steel type on my team. And he sees that coming... I keep switching pronouns for my opponent, that's because I don't know if it's a male or a female, so I'm going to continue doing that. And I don't want to get burned by the Scald, so I'm going to go back on the Togekiss, even if he wants to go for Ice Beam. Uh, it's not going to do much to my specially defensive Togekiss. Now, expecting another Scald, or perhaps switching up to Ice Beam, I go out into Gardevoir, which is just max HP, max special attack, and I went out to it specifically there because I knew I could trace Water Absorb which would just be fantastic against my opponent's team, being a mono water type team. I'm going to get rid of so many stab options for him. Uh, I went for Shadow Ball there, mainly because I wanted to get good neutral damage. I was afraid uh, Empoleon might switch in, uh, and I actually end up going for the attack as he sets up a substitute, and I see, of course, the leftovers, and he can't go for Waterfall, so I don't want to switch out of here. He's going to be forced to go for Earthquake. So the situation that I want to put him in is, uh, first of all, I don't want to Mega Evolve because I'll, I'll lose my Water Absorb. Second of all, I needed to see if he had Earthquake. When I used Future Sight, I knew I could live an Earthquake because he has Leftovers. This is probably a more bulky build. And so I can make it so that the Future Sight will hit him on the next turn as long as I take out a Substitute. Since he's not Mega Evolving, uh, it's not really good for me to try to Mega Evolve myself and finish him off with the Moon Blast because it won't be enough. But since I knew he would probably go for the Earthquake again, I can switch in my Air Balloon Excadrill as he gets taken down by the Future Sight, which is just fantastic. I've never had Future Sight work out quite that well before. Uh, my opponent does bring in Blastoise here, which is a little bit annoying because I know that it is going to Mega Evolve. And again, Mega Blastoise just hits so incredibly hard that you have to play around it. This is my specially defensive Togekiss, and it took over a quarter HP damage from that water pulse. So it's likely he's he's running more of a max speed, max special attack type build. Instead of the bulkier builds that I've seen run around or even that I run. Now expecting another water pulse, I'm going to go out into Gorgeist Kid. I, I did not want to risk trying to use uh, Air Slash or Thunder Wave through the confusion. So I'm just going to double switch out here expecting another Dark Pulse. I mean expecting a Dark Pulse to try to hit Gorgeist. Unfortunately it still does 
enough damage after the poison where he's going to be able to finish me off with another water pulse. That's not too bad. Uh, while I did really need Togekiss in this battle, it does give me a free switch into my Gardevoir. And I'm going to Mega Wall just for kind of the heck of it. I know Blastoise is too bulky to one-hit KO with any of my moves, and so we're going to go for Destiny Bond. A lot of people just don't see that coming, and I knew that I would outspeed Mega Blastoise, so I now's a perfect chance kind of just to take him with me, uh, and then I don't have to worry about trying to force my way through that bulk or anything like that. Now is a great time to go on into Tyrantrum. I figure he would probably bring back out Empoleon just because it's already paralyzed and it's at full HP so it could probably take any move. And I'm just going to set up my Stealth Rocks. He kind of wants me to switch out of here, probably expecting an Earthquake or that or something to that effect there uh, after I use it the first time. But since I'd, I really don't want anything to take a Scald or possibly be burned, I'm going to need my Gorgeist for sure against the rest of his team. I'm just going to let Tyrantrum fall asleep here and set up Stealth Rocks. I did a good amount of damage with that Earthquake, even without Life Orb or Attack Investment. So I was feeling pretty secure about that. Now, my opponent unfortunately does carry the Ice Beam, which is quite common on, on Empoleon, but once again, happy I didn't try switching in Gorgeist. That would not have gone too well. Uh, but now that the situation has been handled and even my Stealth Rocks are up, I'm afforded yet another great opportunity to go out in a Choice Scarf and Diggersby. I'm going to outspeed even without the Paralysis, and the crit was completely unnecessary there. Uh, I think even Max Defense Empoleon struggles with living a hit from Diggersby. But with that being said, he's actually going to go for Swagger with Quagsire, which is important because I get plus two in my attack stat, except for it doesn't matter against Quagsire, because Quagsire has an ability called Unaware that annoys your opponent's stat boost. So it gives me a 50% chance of hitting myself, and my attack does not go up against the Quagsire. So he's able to recover off some of that damage that, he's, that I'm doing to him. I'm basically doing the same amount of damage that he's recovering, it looks like. Uh, he doesn't have leftovers, so he's not building up that residual HP every turn. Expecting him to go for yet another recover, I'm just going to switch out into my core guys at this time. And if, even if he wanted to switch into his uh, Vaporeon like he ends up doing, I know a choice banded uh, seed bomb is going to destroy it. It would. It, I think even if he's max HP, max defense, I can 2 it KO it. So, And then Gorgias is bulky enough to live anything that it wants to do in return. So Quagsire comes back in, but being four times weak to Seed Bomb is going to be his downfall. And I'm going to end up taking that battle with the narrow 2-0 victory. Uh, big shoutouts to my Gardevoir right there, just being able to use Destiny Bond to take down Mega Blastoise. I would have had a lot of trouble with that if it had been down to just my Diggersby, who would not have been able to one-hit KO it. And, of course, Gorgeist gets outsped and hit with the Dark Pulse. So that was a pretty good match, I would say. And you don't often see mono-type teams when you're doing passerby battles, so I did enjoy that match. I will see you guys later on this week. If I have time, I will be uploading extra matches on Thursday and Friday. Otherwise, at the very least, expect me on Friday. So you'll have a great week, and I'll talk to you then. Bye now.